Okay, cool. Hello. Hi, Jeffrey. Um, welcome to my podcast. My podcast is called More Than Matter. Um, it is where we talk about all things beyond matter. Um, it's all things that I'm interested in, um, growth, success, spirituality, the spirit, energies, the body, the mind, the soul, all things about elevation. So I want to introduce you, Jeffrey Goldstein, uh, to the audience. Uh, we met two years ago over the internet. So we met on YouTube after I um, accidentally came across um, an energy ball, personally. So I created my own energy ball, and I, I had a very profound experience um, with energy and with the body. So I needed to find someone who understood me, someone who knew what <laughs> I was going through, and that's when I came across your video about create how to create an energy ball. Um, I commented and then you responded back with your email and then that's how I got involved in um, your class. So if you can take the role and talk about everything, that would be great. <laughs> well, first, it's wonderful to be here. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> I've enjoyed meeting you from the beginning on Zoom and now here in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, your curiosity and your experience with the energy ball is, um, I think it's not uncommon that there's many people having similar experiences and they don't know what to do. Fortunately, you looked on and found someone else that does an energy ball and then you contacted me and I've been able to share with you um, uh, some of my techniques and some of the ways that I work with energy. So you're on a peace mission now here in America. You are American, but um, you stay in Jerusalem. And over Zoom, that's where, um, that's how we would communicate, you know, um, like over 12 hour time difference, but we would still make it work. Um, 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I appreciated every moment of it. I appreciated that there were a lot of older people um in the class and that i got to see um different energy fields different body fields um and sending energies to each other through zoom that was another powerful thing that i never um could imagine would would be you know real <laughs> um not being there you know physically as we are now um but over zoom you know so, so uh, I've been doing um, energy healing called attunement for many, many years. It's a type of, uh, it, it's a way to send energy through your hands and to help clear, neutralize, balance energy. So when the Zoom came around uh, the, and, and the other uh, video uh, medias, um, and we started to work, I very quickly introduced the energy ball in a, in a session and it just worked really nicely. And then we started to open up our hands and something changed. Uh, all of a sudden, I started to see that it, it was easier to make a collective field. Mm. And you could actually see it and feel and, and feel it that we were creating a bubble of light. Now, when I do an uh, energy ball with a, an another person and with, with a group of people in what I call an energy ball for peace ceremony in person, it's a very different experience than on Zoom. But both of them are really excellent and both of them carry the, the vibration. Mm -hmm. Speaking of vibration, um, how do you create peace vibrations? Because I've, you've mentioned peace vibrations before yeah. what how do you define what those are and how do you get to that vibration well <clears throat> there's a certain inner peace that we that every human being has the opportunity to connect to 
And uh, there are many ways that we can connect to the, this inner peace through meditation, through walking in nature, through being at the beach, through having a creative conversation, through prayer, many, many different ways, and through the energy ball. Um, and um, I lost my train of thought. I thought um, peace vibration. Oh, that peace vibration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when we we have this inner peace, like we've developed an inner peace. So I love to be near the water, and I feel an inner peace. And then we have an outer peace that comes outside of us. Mm. So I'm interested. How are we going to bring this inner peace outwards? And that outer peace is what our world is hungry for. So when two people come together and they're laughing and they're sharing together, they're creating a peaceful atmosphere in a way, a fun atmosphere as well. Mm -hmm. Or when, um, uh, or when a, a, a parent and a child are together and there's, and there's just warmth, there's a peaceful vibration. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, today's world, I think we're, a majority are not at that vibration. We would be, I don't know, I would consider <clears throat> most of the world to be on the opposite spectrum of that, um, creating chaos and creating ang anger. I don't know if I, I, w I would say that you're wrong. That's not the majority. Mm -hmm. I think I that there are wrong. people <laughs> that are doing it, but they're doing it in private. Mm. They're being... They're just nice people. They're good people. They're loving. They're 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 holding something of a, a a nice a peaceful vibration at whatever level. Some higher, some lower. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't call it that. I I actually think that um, at least half of our the world population carries that, and okay. I think a very a, a smaller percentage carry the fighting, but they're much more verbal. And they're much more better at spreading it. Yeah. And many people get convinced and then they lose their center. Mm -hmm. They lose that connection to their inner peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'm right a little there. optimistic or maybe no. my figures aren't right. But, Love it. But uh, remain optimistic for sure. I think I'm just, you know, not surrounded by the right crowd <laughs> or I'm too surrounded by um, the opposite. But I have you know, lost my center multiple times. Um, but when I found it again, it, it was stronger each time, you know, and more, more awareness, more capable of holding on to that center. And how did you I find am. it? How did you come back to your center? What, what was your method? <sighs> how do I come back? Honestly, <laughs> I think it's universal. Um, it just happens. Um, the more I, I want it, the more I fight it, the farther away it gets. And it just needs to happen naturally. It needs to happen through, through time, through feeling safe, feeling vulnerable. That's a big one. And acceptance. Once you are truly accepting of yourself, it, everything shows, everything arises from that. Mm -hmm. It shows itself to you. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> <laughs> Wonderful. So um, you have mentioned before peace teams. Can you mm. talk about what those are? Oh, I look at peace teams as groups of people that come together and are creating a an atmosphere of, of harmony, of peacefulness, of um, cooperation. Um, and this can be it it can be a family unit it can be a business unit it can be friends it 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 and it happens in the moment so a peace team happens in this moment then when a peace team comes together there's a magnification of the peace vibration mm. i love that i was telling you earlier about my weekend mm -hmm. that could be considered a peace team Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People are coming together, sharing yes. good food and yoga and yes. and walking in nature. And it's a it's a peace team. And I, I'll take it one step further. My my vision is that many peace teams mm -hmm. together create a an atmosphere of peace 
and that our world is so hungry for this. The consciousness of humanity is hungry for it. The earth is hungry. Individuals are hungry. Uh, they're just hungry for the vibration of peace. Mm. Vibration of peace and creative humanity. Yeah, I think it is a great, a great path to becoming a more creative species. And by that, I mean creating, creating things for ourselves, for others, just helping each other live easier lives. I think that's very important. Um, back to your energy ball. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you can describe what it is exactly to someone who might not know what an energy ball is and can we create one? Sure. Okay. So, um, the way that I create an energy ball is I place my hands close together and then make make a ball. Now, I'll go through it slowly. I'll go through the steps slowly in a little bit. So once I put my hands together, something happens. The it, um, My body is a little bit, every bo human body is a little bit electrical. We have our heart. It's a little electrical. And so we're sending out this a little bit of electricity around our body. So we have this electrical, tiny electrical body that's, they call it an an aura, uh, and there are different parts. People call it chakras. There's many different names, and you can look on the internet. They have different layers to it. Um, but I'm not so concerned about that. What I'm concerned about is the fact that when you bring your hands together, you connect up to that whole energy body around you and also the energy flowing through you. So once that happens, and I do it for a few moments, it kind of circulates the energy and calms it down, neutralizes it, helps it flow better. And the energy like has a, it, the energy around us in us can get stuck. And in many ways it can get stuck in places and then disease happens. That's a whole different story. We can talk about it after if you want. But basically um, when we bring our hands together, we're bringing a circulation of energy. And so what, um, and I'm explaining this because this is uh, something real. It's not something that, um, it's not imaginary. It's not something that uh, only certain, only uh, certain people can do. Everyone can do it, but not everyone will feel energy because they're not trained at feeling it or they block the energy. A lot of people are blocking feeling sensations in their body. Mm -hmm. We can also talk about that mm -hmm. after. That's a good topic. To. Uh, yes. So, okay. So let's just start. I think I said enough words here. So if you rub your hands together, if you're watching us, just you can follow along. Yes. If you're wearing metal on your hands, you can take it off. Your pearls are okay. Thanks. <laughs> and then you shake out your hands. And then look at your hands and just appreciate them for a moment. Hands are amazing. You move your fingers around. They, if unfortunately you don't have use of your hands and listening to us, then you can do it with your imagination. In my book on the energy ball, I have a story about a friend of mine that uh, was a quadriplegic and he did it amazingly well. Just and he glowed every time we, uh, we, we were in a circle. So now to place your hands very close together, almost touching. And just notice what's between your hands, what you sense between your hands. What are you sensing right now? Warmth. Okay. So there's a warmth and that warmth can grow into a pretty strong heat. Mm -hmm. And you can also feel a magnetic feeling where your hands will push back and forth. You can also just feel like a presence, like just a presence of life. It's just like you, you just know that there's something present. 
And also for those that uh, their hands are waking up, you may feel pins and needles. And it's like uh, waking up or uh, being stimulated sometimes as well. So once you feel it, then you kind of round it into a ball. And if you notice, I just took a, a deep breath. So that's a deep natural breath. That's a discharging breath where my nervous system shifted over in a sense and just allowed some, some discharging. Okay, so, uh, so once you place your hands or you start like this, then you make a ball and then there's energy present. Now, because it's difficult, it'll, uh, I don't want to make a ball together, but in the peace ceremony, we make balls with two people and four and eight and then the whole group. And sometimes we put people in the middle of the uh, circles and it's a wonderful, it's fun to do. And it's also very cleansing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it kind of helps the body organize its energy field. So that's a group attunement really. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, it feels magnetic. Yeah. It's kind of like it's bouncing. So then I do other. other things with the energy ball. I um, I use my, um, uh, I can use my voice, my imagination, my breath. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I will blow into the energy ball. And then I can feel like this whole room being filled with light. So in a sense, I don't even need the energy ball because the energy ball expanded around the room. But I'm going to come back and make another one uh, because I want to show some things. And uh, so, like I feel around my body, like in, uh, like there's a lot of energy around the room now. And um, you can feel it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's hard to describe, you know, it's hard to explain, but you can, and you can also see it. I can see it around your your head a little bit. So once we do this, the energy starts flowing. Uh, now we can also chant into the energy ball. Um, so we, uh, I like to chant uh, the different vowel sounds. And really when we're chanting, we're stirring the energy up. We're kind of like moving it. Mm. It's like, and that's, and in our world, it's sometimes really good to do. Sometimes when there's a lot of noise around you and a lot of chaos, it's, it's like it interferes with our energy field. So as we chant, we can, we can um, neutralize it. And the other thing is listening to running water mm. by the beach or a river. This is excellent to allow the external noise to neutralize. Mm -hmm. So let's just try it together. We'll just do a little a chant. And I'm just going to start with... Oh, And the microphone's kind of in the way, but it's still getting into the energy ball. It's like I'm I'm directing it towards the energy mm -hmm. ball. And that vibration comes inside the energy ball. And then I can do something with that also. Um, I can I can also place it around a part of my body if my knee is hurting. I can I can place it around my knee, um, especially with the chanting, something like that, because it stirs up the energy and mm -hmm. helps it move. I can also uh, do do uh, words, say words. So when I say thank you, or I'm grateful for life, I can feel that in my hands, and then as I send it out. It's not just the words of gratefulness, it's also words and energy together. Um, many times I do a long distance um, healing with people, long distance therapy. And the uh, what happens is we're uh, helping to either neutralize the energy around and in them, or helping them to bring out the, the stuck energy inside. Mm -hmm. That's a little different technique than the energy ball, but um, that's powerful. 
I felt my energy ball vibrate um, during your chant. Okay. Okay. Um, but when you mentioned energy and words together, um, I remembered my weekend. <laughs> Everyone was so open at my at this retreat that I went to. Um, everyone was so open about sharing knowledge and expressing love for life um, that it made me feel their power, feel their strength, um, and want to give too. And when I would give, um, I would receive 10 times, 10 times more. So I wasn't afraid to be vulnerable because I knew my words weren't going, my words weren't floating off. They were landing exactly where I needed them to land. Um, and it was just great. It was wonderful. Um, a group of very appreciative people. And I truly appreciate them. Shout out to them. (laughs) Maybe I'll have them on the podcast next. Um, You mentioned traumas or stuck energy, Mm -hmm. which I see as trauma, um, unresolved trauma. So let's discuss um, what traumas are, you know, and how can they get stuck in the body? Well, before I answer that question, mm-hmm. I'll just say that I studied somatic experiencing. It's a, it's a trauma releasing therapy and uh, it works very well. And I would also say something that we're in a time right now, uh, an amazing time in humanity because we have probably over 50 excellent trauma therapies that have been developed over the past maybe 10, 10 years, five or 10 years. And um, and so people can release the trauma that's in the body. So let me go, so so it's all not, it isn't only somatic experiencing that works, there's many good methods. So if a person is out there that has trauma, I encourage you to help get it out of the body. Mm-hmm. So I will explain what I do to help get it out of the body. First, um, first, I recognize the fact that trauma is stuck in the nervous system. And our nervous system is interested to flow. It has memory, but it wants to flow. And it's stuck there for a reason. An excellent example is just say you're driving a car and someone comes from here and you see them and you want to turn the car, and you can't, you get hit. And, mm-hmm. and your, body, your trauma is like there's a trauma in you. And where is the trauma stuck? It's in this hand that wants to turn and save you. The, mm. it's, it's all about saving our life. We save our life with our hands, with our voice, with our eyes, with our feet. Um, we can either run, we can kick, we can fight, we can jump, we can, uh, we can, uh, scream. There's many ways to, to get out of a situation. And, uh, when it's not completed in the body, that gets stuck in the body and then it develops into what we call a traumatic experience. That's maybe a simplified, I mean, it's difficult to explain it. It's a Mm -hmm. little bit simplified, but it's basically in the nervous system. And releasing it from the nervous system, uh, there are many excellent ways. I could share with you a few if you want. Sure, yeah. Um, For me, I think it's about thoroughly processing it in whatever way. Um, I think it starts with recognizing it, acknowledging it, um, and then listening to your body, listening to what it needs to do next. But if you have any techniques, please. Well, though, that's very much part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have something in the somatic experiencing. It's an acronym. It's called the SIBAM. And uh, it's s- sensations, uh, images, and, and the five senses. Mm-hmm behavior and movement, um, uh, 
affect and emotion and meaning. Many of us, when we have a trauma or something happens, we get into the meaning. We want to understand it. And that's okay. Sometimes we over mm -hmm. trying to understand it, but it's only one part of where a trauma can get stuck in our body. The other parts are the sensations, the images, like you see, you see the image of the car or something like this. Um, the, the colors, the, the color of the car, the everything. Uh, the, what you want to do, the, the, the movement, how we want to save ourselves, and the emotions that come up. So many times what it is is we're not working with the whole range of uh, the possibilities of how our nervous system is holding it. Mm -hmm. And so we just get, we kind of, we talk it out, which is good, which is excellent. We want to have it talked out. But if we get stuck in the talking and we don't get into the, the body releasing it, so that's the art of uh, of somatic experiencing, really. Mm. Um, does that make sense? Yes. It does. It's not only physical traumas, correct? You can do the same with emotional traumas that you've gone through, like Absolutely. an emotional Absolutely. blockage. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes it'll happen. I've heard the strangest stories where. Uh, a parent says something to a child, not uh, you know, just just and and they get traumatized from it, and mm. it becomes an emotional trauma, and they remember it for their whole life. And then, like the parent didn't mean it; it wasn't intentional, but it was taken in a way that traumatized, and then they became mm -hmm. emotional. And something happened emotionally, and we can go into that emotion and help it discharge and mm -hmm. help it resolve itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not just the emotion into the the nervous system w where it's being held, uh, the memory of it in a sense. Yeah. I think that takes a lot of power for uh, not only for you helping that person, but the person itself. Absolutely. Themselves. Absolutely. They need to want to do it. And that's the key. <laughs> what you're talking about is the key. Yeah. How do you convince a person to help themselves? Yeah. And... Um, some people will just, there's many ways, like um, sometimes it's just smiling at a person or saying, oh, can I help you? Or, or is there some, like talking to the person mm -hmm. and then they start to open up and then guide them to the right, if you're not a therapist, then, mm -hmm. uh, then, then to guide them towards some type of, of, of uh, assistance. And assistance doesn't have to be with the therapist. Like I've known uh, uh, granddaughters and grandmothers or grandsons and, and, uh, and, and talking to their grandparents and mm -hmm. it works wonderful or other relatives. It's, yeah. there's something of opening up and sharing. And, um, but when it gets, if it's a difficult trauma, then you need someone to help you. Mm. Makes <clears throat> sense. Yeah. I have. A few close people. I think the closest would be my cousin that I speak with. Um, and yeah, that's how our journeys have um, have grown with each other. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Um, blocking sensation. We mentioned that earlier. Can you talk about that? <laughs> I think I know what um, you're referring to. I used to be that type of person. Um, anything good that would come along, I just wouldn't believe it, wouldn't accept it, and just continue continue on my life path. But um, it got to a point where I wanted change, and I changed my own circumstances. Well, great. It's wonderful that you did that. And, <laughs> uh, and I would encourage everyone that's listening to, to have that same desire. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, let's change our circumstance. Every moment is brand new, so it's not that you changed it last week. So you have to. You're we're changing now. Mm -hmm. We're actually ever changing. We're in a process. We're, we're a whole process. Mm -hmm. We have trillions of cells in our body. Everyone is alive, and everyone is communicating. And we're and our whole body is in a process. We're a living, mm -hmm. amazing being. Uh, so why do people get stuck? Well, 
there's many reasons. Um, there's a there's a lot of example of stuckness. Mm -hmm. So a person sees someone stuck, so they think it's okay to be stuck. They don't, it, not up here, mm -hmm. but in their experience. Like, or if a person's angry, it's okay to be angry. Now, anger to me has a purpose. If mm -hmm. if if uh, if you're being uh, uh, um, uh, um, chased by animals in the old days, like just say maybe even now, but if you're being chased by animals and you turn around and you scream, ah, something like this, you you can scare it, scare them away. Uh, or people or whatever it is, we have a, a voice of anger to, to, to use it to save our life. But what's happened with anger is that it got out of control and people get angry for all sorts of reasons. They're not saving their life, they're blowing off steam. Mm -hmm. So yes, it does blow off steam, but it, it's not creative. So it develops a blockage inside towards sensation. So we have, uh, in order to 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 sense mm -hmm. energy in our hands or to or to have or to know the sensation in our body, we have to be willing to uh, to be honest with ourselves in a sense and have to be willing to say what's happening inside of me, what's going on in in, in me, um, and and if a person says, well, I'm angry in me. Well, I, what I ask the person is, where do you feel it in your body and what color is it and, and what does it mm -hmm. want to say? Mm -hmm. And instead of screaming it out, it comes out differently. Personally, I'm very angry at the way people treat the earth. People are take, 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 and without this giving. So now I feel very strong, like let's give to the earth, just love our earth. If you see a tree, love your love the tree that's present. Thank it for the oxygen. Anyway, uh, that's one thing. There's a lot of things about stuckness, stuck energy, and and, and it, it's all over. I mean, that's the example people have, but not but it but not everyone is stuck. People are flowing. Yeah, yeah, there are flowing people out there. Lots. Yes, lots. Um. I appreciate you mentioning the earth and mentioning trees. It, this is our home. We mm -hmm. need to appreciate every inch and corner of it. Um, and I mentioned earlier that I, <laughs> during my walks every day, I go out into my park. There's a specific tree that I hug. Um, so yeah, it's it's like a communication. It's like what a type friend. of tree is it? Ugh, I don't know my trees. I okay. just know it's. Okay. It's so a nice matter. tree. <laughs> I'll send you a picture okay. next time. <laughs> um, yeah, nature. It's wonderful. You're never alone in nature. Um, and it allows you to to feel that flowness, that flow state of life. Um, back to being stuck. <laughs> Do you think stuck energy... Um, can develop into other things such as <coughs> disease if it remains stuck for too long? <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Uh, absolutely. And it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's more and more proof uh, that, that the energy not flowing in a certain place causes an organ or to to uh, not function well mm -hmm. um, I believe there's more and more scientific proof going on um, yeah it's interesting how um, this modern science you know we rely so much on it but back in the day like what did they do really did they did they do what we're talking what we're talking about right now, like energy healing and growth and sending energies to the right place. Or what do you when are you talking about? Like before modern science. You know, what how did people take care of themselves? Well, you know, if um if if a baby hurts themselves, the mother will immediately put their hand on it. Mm. And so it's very instinctive. Um, uh, we have many ways 
of healing ourselves, the, the, the herbal medicine that is, that is in the native cultures, mm -hmm. um, all the plant medicine and so such. There, there's a, amazing ways to for healing. And, and as far as energy goes, uh, it's, there's also uh, been an atmosphere, you know, um, uh, and living together. True. Yes, we were talking about this earlier, that um, community, the tribe right. feeling, feeling that every person has a purpose, has a role to play in the community. Right. That's what we're about. We're social creatures. We need that validation, I guess, to feel yeah. to feel that what we do has purpose. We're creating. When uh, before we were in modern civilization, we survived by being in groups. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. We survived by being in groups, and. Uh, the way we, I mean, if you were alone, it was hard to to get shelter and food, and so there needed to be groups, and and we have that in our brain. Our brain is in this. We want community. Yeah. We're happy when we get together with friends. There's a happiness. There's a joy. There's something about being together that's that's ingrained in us. And when we don't have that, or when we have it, um, when we have the relationships that are not healthy, and not everyone is in the in a a, a peaceful or a sharing and a loving space, mm -hmm. a giving space, then a person learns inside of them that being with other people isn't safe, and it's true for them that those type of people need to find people that they can be safe with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, the, the therapies and a lot of the work that's been done professionally goes towards that, finding a safe person. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, as I said before, there's a lot of good things going on. There's a lot of excellent um, therapies out there and techniques. Yeah, and I love that I'm meeting more and more people like this, um, more and more people spreading love you know, um, I think once you open your eyes to it, you'll see it everywhere. Um, so one other big question I had was, um, how do you keep your spirit clean? Mm, clean and clear, let's say. Like, how do you keep it communicative? How do you keep it talking to you? And how do you recognize it? Um, amongst all the other things going on in your head, you know? Well, um, I, it, I go from, um, it's, it's not a one, a, a, a one channel thing. It's, it's a multiple. Mm -hmm. Okay. I start with the fact that <clears throat> I'm a uh, th that this body is a miracle. This body is magical, and that to do this is magical. So to speak is magical. Most people would say, "No, that's natural. It's everything else." What do you mean magical? Mm -hmm. And to them, it isn't magical <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's just it's just normal for them. Mm -hmm. But to me, I have a consciousness that. I'm living in an amazing body. I'm I'm living in a miracle. And so that helps keep me clear and centered. Mm -hmm. It helps me keep me connected to my spirit, to the the pureness. I have a body and I want to care for my body and I want it to to be as clear as I can. Um I have m emotions that are ever flowing and I also want them clear, but I want I, I want to feel the wide range of emotions, and and um, uh, and I want to and, and empathize with other people, but also bring out the joys of life. And I have um, and I have my thoughts, and I have many different thoughts, but I don't let my thoughts take over me. That's what a lot of people do; they get stuck in this mm, mm -hmm. this like uh, this trap, and they just go over and over. 
We call it in, in the trauma therapy, we call it the trauma vortex. This is just a vortex. Mm -hmm. I just get caught in it and they're in their mind and whoa, 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 and everything. And, and to them, everything is a mess. But it isn't really, it's just out of control. Well, it is a mess, but it's not under control and it can not be a mess by just letting the spirit come and, and help it. Because mm -hmm. our spirit wants us to be clear, wants us, wants to help us, wants to help people come out of this um, confusion mentally, emotionally. I see it as um, that tiny voice, <laughs> very tiny voice for the people who are overthinking. Um, it's not that they don't have the answer. They do have the answer. They have this side and then they have that side. And then they probably have other things too. Um, but that tiny voice of reason, I guess, or knowing that it's right, just understanding that if you follow that voice, it will lead you somewhere good. <laughs> um, that's what you have to listen to. And it usually comes up. It's probably the first thing, um, uh, first, what's the word introduction? Um, the first feeling that you have when you come across an opportunity, a person, a comment, whatever it may be. It's that first feeling. And then that's when the thoughts come in after that and then provide self-doubt in a sense and overthinking. It Would you sense. agree? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> um, how would you, how, what is your routine? Do you have a routine to um, maintain your peace? Is it daily? Is it weekly? No, it's momentarily. Momentarily. Yeah. I, I, I try to be in the present moment. And sure, I have certain routines. I try to exercise. I go to nature. I'm, I do conscious breathing. I do some meditation. I communicate with friends. I, I'm doing writing. I'm, <laughs> I'm writing. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading and learning things. I have, I'm curious. Uh, curiosity is probably one of my favorite things. Like, you know, I can, uh, I can just go and look at something. I looked at a tree today and the bark was so different than I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And it just got me curious. I'm like, I could feel it in my body. So, so it stimulates something from deep inside. Mm, curiosity. I like that because curiosity is what has led me to where I am today. Hmm. Curiosity has led me to find my life purpose that I was talking about earlier in the car. Hmm. Um, for months now, I've been interested in music and I've been following shows, following events, following festivals, trying to go to whichever one calls to me. Um, and one thing led to another. Um, I ended up going to festivals alone, like by myself and wondering, you know, where is that community that I'm trying so hard to seek? And it dawned on me that I am a creator. <laughs> um, I've known this, but I realized in a new light, in a new lens, I'm a creator. I want to create connection through music. So my chase for all these festivals has led me to understand that I need to DJ. <laughs> and I have, and it's probably the best thing ever. The only thing I can think about is music. And that's all I care about. And when I'm in it, I'm lost. I feel like I'm in a new world and I'm creating it. I'm creating my own world. And my next step is just sharing, sharing it, sharing what I feel through music out into the world. So this is a very new realization, like a month ago. Wonderful. Yeah. Nice, yeah. To, nice to see it. Yeah. And nice I've been practicing every day. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, curiosity. Yeah, I love it. It makes me do crazy things. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
and I love every moment of it. Yeah. So I have a big curiosity mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's been going on for years. It's how do we create a collective atmosphere of peace on earth? And I came up with a term called collective magic. Mm. And we, we create collective magic when there's two people together that are in a flow of life. And there's many ways to do it. And two or more people together. And so what I did was um, I developed something. So I want to go back a little. Please. Uh, yes. I live in Israel, in Jerusalem. Um, and uh, when I got there in the 1990s, I started to participate in peace groups. And I found that these peace groups were not communicating well. Like we were together, but there was like a, we were kind of separate. So having done attunement uh, uh, earlier, I started to show people how to just feel energy in their hands and people really liked it. Mm -hmm. And then I started to do it with the group and eventually I created something called an energy circle. And I did energy circles for years and years. And then one day a friend of mine said, uh, what you're doing is actually a ceremony. And, and then I realized, oh my goodness, it's a ceremony of peace. And so I developed it more and more. Eventually I wrote a book on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and now I am on a, a, a self journey of, uh, of bringing peace out, uh, peace vibration out, little bits here and there. Um, into now I'm in California. I was just in Northern and Southern California. And now I'm, I'll be going to uh, Colorado and the East Coast. And my purpose is to do energy ball for peace ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So far, I think I've done about six of them. And each one has been wonderful. And each one uh, has brought out a vibration of peace. And what we do is we create the energy ball. Is it okay if yeah. we do it again? So um, we create the energy ball together. And then we're, we think about the vibration of peace, whatever that means to us. Sometimes we'll think about a child and a, a, a child playing and, and how peacefully, or a baby, or we'll think about the peacefulness of nature uh, or, or looking at a lake that's a quiet lake. Um, there's many ways to, to remind ourselves of peacefulness. And when we do that, C together in a group, we create an atmosphere that bring that brings change. So when I've been doing it in the groups, we've really, um, what we do is we create it and then we lift up the energy. And as we lift up this peaceful energy, it spreads around into the atmosphere. As I said earlier, we spread it around this room, but we can spread it around our cities, our world, and our planet. And some people may say, well, that's nothing. And to them, it is nothing. But to, to other people, it's very real and they can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that, um, that we can learn to sense. We can turn on our senses, our intuition. Intuition. I definitely feel very full of peace. Um, and intuition, I think it's like a muscle. It's a muscle you need to strength if you want to hear it more clearly. You need to just trust it. Again, back to the little tiny initial voice. The more you listen to it, the more you realize it's correct. <laughs> and the more you need to follow that, that's, that voice. So I found a wonderful way to help develop my intuition. Mm. And it's kind of what you talked about before with your little retreat with your friends. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I love to get together with people that are intuitive mm -hmm. and use their intuition slightly differently than me. And I don't, and, and I talk to them and I'm friendly and I'm, and I'm curious and I'm aware and I'm noticing I'm, uh, how the people are different and it works really well. So I'm, I'm learning and th then I learn how to allow my intuition to be a little bit different. 
and um, uh, yeah. intuition can get squashed a yes. lot. Like 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 a person, pe- people get their intuition squashed a lot, and by uh, by the by anger and by disbelief and by fear, and to open up our intuition. Um, Sometimes we have to be brave, and sometimes we have to be uh, cur- and curious. But also, sometimes we need a little help, mm-hmm. and um, that's when we can just talk to someone and what we're sensing. Mm. I just had a wonderful experience. I was uh, I was thinking about a friend of mine who was uh, um, who had told me that she could tread water for forty five minutes. So I'm thinking about this. I'm saying, and, and I've been trying to tread water, and I can't get close to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and so I wrote her this this kind of funny, uh, funny um, uh, what's up uh, yeah. message. message. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, she wrote. She was writing to me at the very exact same time, mm-hmm. and. And then she said, oh, our emails crossed or our messages crossed. And that happens a lot with me. This is intuition, like we're connected together. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, I have to communicate with Jeff something and I want to communicate with her or something. And it's like- It happens at the same time. Yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. And and so that's, there's a lot of these little things that go on. Yeah. Um, And and as we take notice of them, they kind of give us a little assurance. Yeah, I see that as divine. Every time something like that happens, I tell myself I'm in the right place at the right time. The right place at the right time. I mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Um, do you want to talk about your celebration of light? Oh, yeah. yeah. So when after I was in Jerusalem and we started the energy circles, um, we a lot of people started coming together. We want to bring out light. We want to bring out the vibration of peace. Mm-hmm. This is in the early 1990s in Jerusalem. And um, I came together with four other friends and we organized a, a gathering called Jerusalem Celebration of Light. It was held in the Jerusalem Forest, which is um, right next to uh, the west part of West Jerusalem. And it's on a hill and uh, in in nature with pine trees and it's it's actually a vortex Hmm. a male female vortex and um we gathered there for 12 years we had between 300 and a and like 2000 people each time it was free of charge it was i was the main organizer we would come together in with many of our energy circles at different times of the day uh, we would have our Sabbath dinner, uh, and we would have uh, a Sabbath dinner, but also a Sabbath prayers, and we would have singing into the night. We'd have nice drum circles. The next day, we would have workshops from different people with different practices. Uh, we would do dancing. We would be in nature, nature walks, and um, we're just celebrating life. And this would include... Um, uh, people from Palestine and from Israel, um, mostly Israelis, but but also quite a few Palestinians would come. And sometimes we had like one one year we had three Tibetan monks mm. come up the hill. We didn't expect them, and then That's they wonderful. led a workshop, and we did some really nice chanting. And other times we had Native Americans come, and P- my friend a peace troubadour came. I mean all sorts of. Uh, hmm. people would come in order to help celebrate life. And this happened um, 12 years in a row? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> uh, can you explain the uh, vortex, what that means? Is it? Well, okay. So so our, our, earth, had, our earth is sending out energy everywhere. And, um, and we can feel it. We're energy beings, so we can feel energy. We use our hands, so we can feel it with the earth. And uh, there are places where the earth kind of focuses the energy. A lot of times it's up on mountains, but it's not, it's sometimes it's on the side of a mountain. I mean, there's different mm-hmm. ways. Um, I'm not an expert on it. I just know how to sense the energy and enjoy it mm-hmm. and how to work with it 
Because when I go to places like this, the reason we chose this place, this energy vortex, is because it helps send out more light into the world. Mm. And when we send out more light, we kind of uh, counterbalance some of the fear and the, and the, uh, and the hatred that's, that's present. And so anyway, a vortex, so, so I mentioned a male-female vortex. Uh, there's one place on the top of the hill where the energy really pours out, and another place, a female, it kind of goes down. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a natural rock formation that like, uh, I, I went, I shouldn't have gone pieces. It's like a, a whole solid rock with one place mm -hmm. open. And, uh, so that you can really feel the energy come out. That's much more yeah. of a feminine energy. I um, I relate that to how, um, kind of how like trees are. If you look at a tree, you can see um, little spirals that kind of looks like an eye. Um, but the tree is like consisted of like long long energy like that and then spirals so that spiral i see it as a vortex just like where energies yeah. form into into one yeah. um, someone just mentioned that um, yeah <laughs> they brought over uh years ago they brought over um, eucalyptus trees in order to use them for lumber mm -hmm. but you can't use a little eucalyptus for lumber because it grows in a spiral and it it burns out the saws when you when mm -hmm. you cut it. So uh, what you're saying is exactly that. Mm -hmm. You can notice on eucalyptus trees if you go there, you can sense it. You can see mm -hmm. it. Cool. Very cool. Um, do you want to look at the cards? I'm curious. You want to? You want me to choose a card? Yes. Okay. And then I we guess can we're talk coming to it. the we're coming to the end of our time. Yeah, it looks like. we are. Sure. There's a lot of cards, but um, okay. I'm just going to pick close whichever my eyes. calls to you, and we can we can read it. Eyes. We can talk about it. Okay. This okay. One here, what is it? What did I find? Emotional intimacy. Oh, I like it. Okay. I'll let you read it. Okay, I'll Let's read see it. See the picture here. I'll show the picture to the camera. Yes. There you go. <clears throat> cool. Emotional intimacy is a feeling of closeness that comes from trusting someone's ability to love you, hold you, and keep you safe without losing a sense of identity. For some, emotional intimacy is easy, having experienced consistent love and care growing up. They intrinsically believe they are lovable and good enough. For others, emotional intimacy can be more complex. Those who experience inconsistent care as children can unconsciously carry doubts about whether they deserve love and to protect themselves from the pain of not knowing. They create outside of awareness a, self, a false self that projects a lack of need or want for emotional intimacy, or they are only able to relate by caring more about others than themselves. In both cases, the real self sits underneath, still longing for authentic love and connection. Considering these reflections, how do you relate to emotional intimacy? You're asking me the question, sure. how do I relate to emotional intimacy? Mm -hmm. um, well, I love emotional intimacy. I, um, I look at it very different than physical intimacy. And I look at it different than spiritual intimacy. Uh, emotional intimacy is is a it's a real love that's present. It's mm -hmm. it comes from the heart. It comes from this whole region of our body, and uh, and it complements uh, physical intimacy in 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 the correct relationships, and it complements spiritual intimacy. Mm -hmm. And um, so. I don't know if that's good. Yeah, no, that's great. I feel like this aligns with what we were talking about because it has talks about love, essentially. And providing a space for the vibration of love and vibration of peace to exist already allows for emotional intimacy to happen. And that's 
this is very um, real <laughs> because I can relate to it. Um, and that's how I felt this past weekend um, with strangers, you know, um, allowing space to be open and vulnerable and coming out of that experience as very close friends, you know. I've been doing this for years and mm -hmm. I've been meeting, having true emotional experiences with friends mm -hmm. and then it keeps on going and with groups and friends and some more than others and like a heart connection develops and i've just been with some people that i haven't seen for years i mean 25 years and we get together and the heart connection's still there and the mm -hmm. and the and the spiritual intimacy is present and this the the emotional intimacy and the spiritual intimacy is present so i love that yeah Thank yeah, you very much for uh, for hostessing me, <laughs> and uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate all the work that you're putting in to mm -hmm. creating a better world, and I'm very grateful to be a friend of yours. I'm grateful to have you invited me here. And if anyone's <clears throat> if anyone's interested in my work, you can go to my website. I guess you'll put it's uh, Jeff Goldstein, Atuner com. And, um, or you can write my email, jeffgoldstein89 at gmail.com. So I have information on there. And if you're in Colorado, um, you can contact me and I can let you know what our schedule is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, also on the East Coast. I'm still creating. And if anyone wants to invite me, you're welcome to invite me over. Yeah. Um, I am excited to bring forth the peace ceremony to Somewhere. all of america actually mm -hmm. the world <laughs> well right now america and the world. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. and to israel too israel and palestine which we didn't get into talking much about but we can do another time okay all right sounds good and Take before care. we close off for sure mm -hmm. um i want to thank the sponsor of the video Okay. which is me. <laughs> I have a clothing um, brand. I run clothing alteration business with my family. Um, but on top of that, we also um, hand make clothes and design clothes and all that. So I wanted to give you this handmade Armenian mask. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> we use the profits um, to send yes. to families that we sponsor in Armenia. Mm -hmm. um, some soldiers who got wounded from the most, the most recent war. Um, we send, um, we send profits or uh, sales, um, and sometimes out of pocket, um, once a month. So we help them with whatever they need, medical expenses, mm -hmm. travel, all that. Wonderful. But yeah, thank you yeah, yeah. again. Thank you so much. It's wonderful work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I love it. This is what I want to um, portray in, into the world, you know, create a safe space for well, you're doing it. friends, for family, for individuals. Yeah, everyone to learn from. Thanks Wonderful. again. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful.